What's up gang? Do you recognize this? If you're old enough, you might be shouting, it's a cassette recorder. My first cassette recorder was actually a Tascam four track tape recorder. My teacher gave it to me when I was around 11 years old to take home and noodle around with. And I was obsessed with creating kind of Foley ambient field recordings and taking the lid off and messing with the tape. You did need a pencil on hand and only some of you are old enough to get that reference. <laughs> Today is a really exciting day. If you want that same hands-on workflow, but inside the DAW, then let's just dive into it. So if you're a subscriber of the channel, you know that I don't really do plugin reviews unless I really believe in something. This isn't really a plugin review. It's just something I'm excited about, nor is it a sponsor of Inner Ocean Records anyway. But Inner Ocean, guys that I've mentioned on the channel before, they've brought us this four track kind of replica of that Tascam unit I was speaking of. To me, this is so exciting and I want to show you three things. Firstly, what is this device and how does it operate? Secondly, what can you do with it and what comes with the device? And thirdly, how would I use this device in the real recording world or live performance world? And I don't think you're going to get that in any other video. So make sure you stick around. So right off the bat, you obviously get four channels and I'm only going to focus on the first one because then after there, it's rinse, repeat. So firstly, you've got your input gain. Let's get a sound real quick. Inner Ocean include sounds that you can use with this device, which we'll come back to. Now, if you're in Ableton, what you're going to want to do is come over to that sample or sound that you're recording and make sure that you're sending the signal to the Inner Ocean device. And it will have four channels there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight here. So we're going to send it to channel one and two. I like to change this setting to four bars just to make sure that we've got enough space for the recording. I hit record, then play my sound. There it is coming in. Now, back in the day, you would only have about eight seconds to record onto, and I think they're replicating that with this device, but I could be wrong. Let's record that sound again. And then remember to click off the recording. Cool, so there's our sound playing in. And that's cool, that's got its own loop already. What I'm gonna do is set a loop region and you can set a little fade here. If there was one thing that I could have from my device, it would be a crossfade function. So if you guys are listening, I'd love to see a crossfade function. But now this device is gonna play this section here. If I hit play. I'm gonna take that section there and just bring this fade down a little bit. So that's our loop section up there. That's our record section. We've also got overdub. So if you had another sound, so we're going to take this root sound here and press overdub, then that means that we'll get a new sound layered over the top of it when we play it, but it's a tape recorder. So don't forget to hit that record button. Awesome. So now we've overdubbed that new sound there as well. To the right of this, we've got our highs, mids and lows. So we can mix this sound a little bit. Here's all our brightness and tape hiss here. Mids. And then there's those lows from that first pad. We can also adjust what constitutes as highs and what constitutes as low on the right hand side here. Underneath that, we can adjust the pitch. And the speed of that loop. And then of course our output volume. It's lovely that we've got a pan function. We can solo and mute this device and a compressor too. So you can really get that kind of tape saturation sound as well, but the effects don't stop there. Cause if we actually click show effects, we can start to create a little bit of tape wobble with this device. Got tape flutter here. We can make that sound nice and wide if we want. We can also introduce different types of noise into the recordings as well. My favorite is the Library of Congress tape player, which actually looks like this. So that's an overview of the device. And what's really lovely, as I've mentioned, is Inner Ocean include these really lovely sounds that work perfectly with the device. They're all labeled. So let's use a fifth. Let's create a little fade so there's no clicking. And then let's go for another sound, maybe some noisy bells. See what that sounds like. That's really cool. Can take the lows out of that one. 
and take the volume down. Let's go for a fifth. Oh, that's so cool. Let's turn it down a little bit. Pan this left, pan this one right. Take that down. That's such a cool sound. And then what I normally do from here is add like a nice uh, delay or reverb. Let's just go with the delay here. That bell sound is truly lovely. It reminds me of that kind of Griselda sound. How nice is that? So if you're new to production or used to like laying down drum tracks first, you might be like, but Will, this is just a bunch of noise. But I really do enjoy devices like this because if you've seen my three moods video, I normally start to paint the canvas first with any kind of ambience. And a device like this is fantastic for just kind of breaking out the box, so to speak, or still being in the box and start to form some loops that are a little bit out of the ordinary. I forgot to mention as well, you also have uh, this reverse function here, which might be really nice with the bells that are coming in a little bit harsh. See, that's super cool already. So I've shown you how to use the device and preview just a couple of the sounds that come with it. Here you've got a whole sample pack of weird little ambiences and sounds that you can throw into the device, which I think are gonna be really fun. That's really gorgeous and fun. I'm gonna use that after. But why did I want to purchase this device? I'll show you. So I'll be honest, as soon as I saw this device, it took me back to Nils Fram's KEXP session. And his performance of Says was so trance-like that I just thought, I wanna be able to do that on the stage as well. So I firstly created this pattern. This is just with the Whirly synth that's built into Ableton. Bum, 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 bum. Then underneath that, I actually transposed the pattern and shifted it along a little bit. So it was a little bit out of time, adding a nice delay as well. I just kept that high note and then added a lot of reverb and delay. And then I went back to that original stem and added loads of reverb and wash. I thought this would make a really fun loop for the Inner Ocean device. So you can open that main UI and then you're met with what we saw before. And immediately I just started messing with the pitching a little bit to make it a little bit darker in kind of an A minor tone like Nils Frams says. So I started with this and then immediately pitched down this device about nine semitones. And I'm panning both of these as well, keeping that first track central, panning the next one to the right a little bit. Our next device is pitched three semitones and panned to the left. Start bringing in the highs there, you'll hear it a little bit more. And turn it up. And that sound is reverse, so the listener isn't getting as many of those transients as we had before, but we can turn that on and off. And then we've got the lovely reverb, which I've kept in the original pitch. Turn those mids up. And I really enjoyed this, so I just added the delay to kind of glue it all a little bit more together. And that makes it really noticeable when you hit poke over here. because it's carried with that new delay. I think this has a fantastic opportunity to be used live. So I'm just pairing that with the electric keyboard here with a little bit of delay on it as well. The thing I get really excited about once you get to this point is actually pressing Command M and being able to MIDI map everything that is on the screen there. And as you can see, I've MIDI mapped the mids of the EQs to the four pots up here on my launch key. And then I've also mapped poke to the last C on my keyboard here. Every time I tap that C, it's like poking an analog tape delay. The reason I brought this to your attention and the reason I get so excited is I immediately start thinking about live performance. This just makes it so tactile, hands-on. You set that loop, maybe start to bring in the first couple of uh, layers and tease that reverb. 
let the audience know that you're kind of replicating that analog hardware. Bring in that higher layer. And then play the keys over the top. How nice is that? Ooh. <laughs> it's all about how you resolve. <laughs> So if you were to use this uh, in a live performance, I would probably mix this with the MPD that I've got in the background there, just so I can bring uh, the output faders in one by one as well. I don't really like to use uh, pots as faders. It's a little bit confusing for the brain. So that could be a wonderful addition for the stage too. If you want to check it out, it's in the description. And if you can't afford it, the guys at Inner Ocean Records are actually hosting a little competition for it this Friday. Again, information is in the description if you're watching this the time that it airs. A device like this really inspires me to write an ambient track that isn't really focused on like four, four time signatures or tempos. If I do create something like that, best believe I'm going to release them with DistroKid, who's today's sponsor. DistroKid make it so easy to release all over your music on over 200 platforms. And they've got some fantastic tools to enhance your music and promote your tracks. So if you're sitting on a big back catalog of work like I am and want to start releasing that music, then join me on DistroKid. Use the link in the description below Low and you'll get 7% off your first year. Now, thank you so much for joining me today. I'm hoping that you'll try out this device and share your work with me over at the Discord. And as always, I'll see you guys next time.